Hey everyone, welcome to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about why your fitness goals may actually be killing your gains and what you should be doing instead. We also talk about a big $15,000 giveaway that you may be able to win. Are you a winner? 60 G's, baby! In the second half of the show, we coach four live callers on how to bulletproof your shoulders using mace bell swings, as well as what to do if your knees hurt when you're squatting. Do you have friends and family that are either into fitness or just getting into fitness? Well, we have the perfect thing for you. We have short, digestible clips that you can share with them on our Mind Pump Clips YouTube channel. Go over there and subscribe and enjoy the rest of this show. Having fitness goals is killing your gains. All right. I yeah. like that. Controversial. I, I like that because I agree today, but I would have strongly disagreed Say ten years ago, totally, yeah, a hundred percent. Now, okay, here's you know here's what's what's going on here with that because people are like, what do you mean you're supposed to have goals? You guys tell us to have goals. Your programs have goals, like you know people want to lose fat, build muscle. Like, what's the deal? Really, what it is, it's the obsession with goals, right? It's the mm -hmm. it's the the focusing so heavily on the goal that you lose all sight of the journey. You 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 lose the ability to enjoy the process. And it becomes all about accomplishing a specific goal, which at some point, if you stick to this long enough, you do this long enough, as you get older, um, that will become a problem because at some point, you're not going to get leaner. You're not going to build more muscle. You're not going to accomplish these types of things. And if you do, on the other hand, if you do accomplish these goals and you work your ass off and you're so focused on this one goal, and once you get there, then you get stuck in this place where you're like, well, do, what do I do now? I, I lost the 100 well, pounds or yeah. I lost the 50 pounds. What a lot of now? times you're just going to ignore those signals your body's providing you in order to push your way through. So it just sort of reiterates that um, that mentality like a lot of athletes have where it's like in spite of everything happening, I have to get to this destination yep. and ignore how my body's like really breaking down simultaneously. So what what type of client are you are you mostly communicating this to? So you get somebody comes in, they're, maybe they just get started. And they they want I have a goal I want to lose thirty pounds would you say no no goal what do you I yeah. mean, who's, who's who are you communicating well, the, this message to the most well I'll say this the people that I first realized um what, what I'm communicating right now the, the people that really illuminated this for me were those clients that we got who said I'm hiring you because I'm getting married in six months mm. or I'm hiring you because I have this thing I got to go to and I need to lose weight for this particular thing, or I have this marathon I want to train for. It's my first marathon. That's why I'm hiring you. And the reason why those people illuminated this for me is because like clockwork, if we got to their goal by the date, they lost all, you know, for lack of a better term, motivation or consistency afterwards. Like they got where they wanted. And then afterwards it was hard to keep them going. I think this applies to everybody though. Right. I, and, and there's nothing wrong with having goals, it's really falling in love with the goal or worshiping the goal that becomes uh, the big issue. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there, this is a type of person like you, like they always had to have like a marathon goal or yes. they had to have a, an event in order to motivate themselves to get in shape. And they never wanted to think beyond that specific goal. Just like, Oh, I'll, I'll figure it out afterwards. Oh, how many times have you heard that? Oh, all the time. I mean, that was, that was, and to me, that's where I was, I think I was see, uh, seeking that from you is that, that that's the client that I recall having this conversation yeah. a lot too was the person who would have this date in mind or mm -hmm. marathon they are running or something they were competing with somebody. And I'm never always say to them like, okay, cool. You want to lose 30 pounds by this, or you have this wedding. Um, did, do you want to put it all back on afterwards? And they'd be like, no, of course not. We'll say, okay, well then how we go about this is so important than just like having this crazy goal that you want to achieve and being so focused on that. Let's talk about all the behaviors that will lead to this, not only getting you there, but then being able to maintain that for, and I make, and I get them to say that to me, do you want to maintain this for the rest yeah, of your life or to yeah. get there? And then, okay, well then there's a, there's a better way for us to approach this. Well, a lot of times too, because I remember having clients like this where they would sign up for an OCR race, they, they, you know, get ready for Vegas trip. And then it's like, they're always thinking ahead of like, what's that next kind of crazy thing that I can uh, get myself into. Uh, and, and it just became this, this obsession over, um, you know, also comparing themselves to other people. It's like, well, I want to look like so-and-so. I want to look like this person. Once I get there, I'm going to be happy. And it's always this sort of, um, you know, projecting themselves on these, these other goals and these other things and not really internalizing the process. Yeah, you know, I learned a lot too, from talking to some of the older, super consistent members that I'd have, like people who are in their fifties, sixties, and seventies 
who like clockwork, they were always there at the same time, you know, same days of the week, working out, they were healthy, they were fit. And something that you're trained to do when you work in gyms by your managers is to ask people what the what's your goal? What's your workout goal? What's your fitness goal? Why would why were we trained to do that? Well, it's a good conversation starter. Great way to pitch a sale. It's also a great <laughs> way to open up a potential sell product, a yeah. supplement, personal training or whatever, or you know, here here's how I can help you type of deal. So when I would ask these clients, these members who were older and super consistent, so these are people who've been working out for 30 years or 40 years, you know, consistently, say, hey, what are your goals? And they'd always be like, oh, I don't really have any goals. You know, and I remember thinking like, what do you mean? Why are you working out? Yeah, you're oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, I enjoy it. I just love working out. I love what I do. And what I realized was their goals were very much for the day. Like, oh, my goal is to feel good today. My goal is to get this workout and then have, you know, no joint pain later or get this workout and have more energy to go, go to do gardening or, and that's kind of how mine has changed a little bit. Now, of course, again, I'm not saying goals are bad necessarily. It's the falling in love with them. Like I still have fitness goals, mm -hmm. but now the more important goals for me, for example, are feeling good for the day. So like I work out, what's my goal today? I want to feel really good today when I come to work, get on the podcast. I want to have good energy when I go home and hang out with my kids and, you know, help my wife make dinner. Like that's different than the, like, I'm going to gain 10 pounds by this time. And I'm all, you know, super laser focused on it because again, two things can happen with that one. You don't hit your goal, which we know how hard that is and what that can do. But then here's the second one. Nobody considers. What if you hit the goal? Mm -hmm. You've been so hyper-focused on this one goal and you've trained your butt off and you've done everything consistently for three months, four months, whatever. Then you hit that goal and then you're in this really strange psychological phenomena where you're like, what do I do now? I had this thing that was driving me. I hit it. First off, I'm not as happy as I thought I would be if I hit that goal because we all, we tend to create this imaginary delusion of, of, oh, if I do this goal, if I hit this goal, I'm going to be so happy. It's going to be so amazing. And then you get there you're like, well, it's not as great as I thought. And then what do I do now? Well, yeah, I've always uh, tried to, to structure short attainable goals. And, and it's really just a, a shift of focus of things where I notice there's a lack of it in my program. There's a lack of it in my mm. focus nutritionally. Uh, I'm not getting really good sleep. Like it's always going to rotate and there's, there's going to be a lack of focus in one area or one aspect that could need more attention. So for me, it's really just taking that, the emphasis and focus and, and deliberately moving it there uh, for a few weeks to a month or maybe a couple months and then and then shifting it where I see the next deficit. Yeah, the biggest the biggest change that I saw for myself was shifting it to the, the the small obtainable goals. Like when I was younger, I was always taught to, you know, shoot for the stars, land on the moon. Yeah. So was, I was always taught like big goals, dream big, think totally. big, don't think small. And so that I that was built in me. So it took a long time for me to figure out that that was not the the best approach for health and fitness for myself and then to teach it to others. Well, that's because this is a life pursuit. It makes sense if you're if it, if it is a short pursuit, like, okay, I'm going to school right now so I can accomplish this particular degree so then I can get a job type of deal. But if it's a life pursuit, which is fitness, like I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Then it becomes a problem. Yeah, that's right. That's why you have to go about it in a in a different manner. And what I found ended up working incredible was actually setting these crazy small, easy goals. Goals that I should be able to knock out in the first week. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, the goal would be this week I just want to get three workouts in. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I hit it. All right. Next goal. And the, like yeah. literally learning to do that to build momentum and to, to turn it into a lifestyle, uh, I had tremendous success. And that what became the key to teaching my clients was to actually, okay, I know you came to me and you hired me because you have this big goal of I want to lose 100 pounds or I want to look like this. Cool, get that. But let's actually break that down week by week. Yeah. Like, what are we going to accomplish this week together? And give me something that is going to stretch you, but it's not going to stretch you so hard that you don't think it's realistic or it's going to be really difficult to achieve. Something you know you could definitely crush. And then we would build Dude, on that. I just remembered, I totally forgot about this, but just brought back a memory. I had a, a client, uh, he was a younger guy. So let's see, he probably went as in his late 30s, but he was an entrepreneur. He owned restaurants. And his, him and his buddies, so he had a bunch of buddies, and I met them all because I went out with them once and we all hung out. Great guys, right? But a bunch of very successful business owners. So they made a lot of money, great guys, really cool. And I trained this particular dude and he needed to lose a lot of weight. Well, anyway, they all came up with this idea because they all needed to lose weight. So they all said, that's it. Let's put money on the table. I was there when this happened. I tried to talk them out of it. So let's put money on the table, five grand a piece. Okay, so there was five of them. I think there were five guys. 
So it's twenty five thousand dollars was the pot. Oh, wow. And in sixty days, let's see who loses the most weight. And I told him, I said, guys. You're going to gain all the weight back and then some. I said, that's not how it works. And I tried to explain it to them or whatever. They said, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. We're going to lose weight and then we'll keep it off and whatever. But this will motivate us. And sure enough, they did. They put the money. And they all lost a lot of weight. And the guy who won, won the $25,000. What do you think happened afterwards? They put it all back. Not only did he gain yeah. it back, he stopped working out. Uh, he stopped working out for a period of time because, you know, for lack of a better term, he kind of burned himself yeah. out because he was, he was so hyper-focused. Punishing hyper himself to get there. He was so hyper-focused on that goal that he, he, within that period of time, he developed kind of this bad relationship with exercise. And he stopped working out with me for like a few months and then slowly ease himself in. And I remember having that conversation saying, you know what, what made you stop working out was that stupid contest you did. You know, he's like, well, at least I won 25 grand. I said, well, okay, sure. <laughs> I mean, I can get behind that, but still, you know, and bragging rights or whatever. Right. But still, you know, yeah. that's the thing. What's up, y'all? Here's the giveaway for today. MAPS Anabolic, the original MAPS program. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section that you won free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, we got a sale right now. MAPS Symmetry and MAPS Strong, both 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below to get signed up. All right, here comes the show. <laughs> Speaking of bragging rights and stuff like that, I got to tell a story of, uh, and Adam, you, this really touched my heart that you did this. <laughs> What's that? The other day. So we're in here, you know, doing the, we're doing a podcast and in between episodes, I get a phone call uh, for, or a text, I should say from Jessica. She picked up my daughter from school that day and she's like, oh, she goes, she's really upset right now. I'm like, what? What's going on? So I'm a very overprotective dad anyway, to put it lightly especially when it comes to my daughter. So I'm like, what happened? Why is she upset? And she goes, well, some boys were in her class, were making fun of her shoes. I said, what? So my daughter's mom, so you know, she's her, her, her mom and I are divorced, so she's with her mom half the time, half with me. Her mom had bought her a pair of Jordans. And so my daughter was all excited to wear her new Jordans to school. Well, I guess these boys were telling her that they were, they were no, those aren't real Jordans, those are fake. I guess reps is the word you use for saying that they're, they're rip. I don't know what the rep stands for. Replicas. Replicas, oh, right? Yeah, they're yeah, fake, yeah. whatever. Got it. And so they made her really upset. So she got in the car. She was crying, right? So super upset. So I'm in here getting this text and you guys saw me. I was yeah. <laughs> just feeling oh, oh, trying heated. to calm him oh, down. Oh, Relax, yeah. bro. It's okay. I was getting heated because I don't, you know, like if my kids get bullied or messed with, it bothers me, especially my daughter. I got this really strong overprotective, right? So I'm like, and it's boys doing it too. So I'm like, oh, I'm just fuming, right? So I get home. Uh, this was like three hours later and she's in bed. She's upstairs in bed. So, so uh, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. so I come home and say hi to Jessica. And I'm like, where's, where's she? She's like, oh, she's upstairs. She didn't want to come out of her room. So I'm like, oh man. So I walk up there, she's in bed and I'm like, honey, I'm like, tell me what happened. Like, what's it? And she's like, I don't want to talk about it. You know, she's like kind of crying. I'm like, oh, I'm so mad. Right. So like, tell me, tell me what's going on. She's like, they said they were reps and they're not real. And I'm like, well, how do you know? I said, your mom bought them. They're Nike. They're Nike. They got to be real. She's like, no, they're the stitching and this, is this and the the label is that. And so I'm like, you know, maybe her mom got ripped off. Like, what's going on? She was all worried because she had these face shoes. So I'm like trying to figure out. I'm going online. I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, I know a guy <laughs> I actually who know knows a guy. more <laughs> about <laughs> knows more about <laughs> like sneakers yeah. than anybody. He's like I an know. almanac. Like, of... fuck, I gotta call Adam. Now, here's the funny thing. Adam, if I text him like after work, it'll take him usually hours to respond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I texted him. I'm like, bro. <laughs> About cause shoes. Because you, you knew my daughter was upset because yeah, of work yeah, earlier. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, I'm, I got home and my daughter says that that she thinks that the shoes might be fake because this and that. So Adam right away responds. He goes, uh, send me a picture of the box. Where did she buy the shoes? This. He's asking me all these questions. So then he, he replies back and he goes, uh, no, those are real. Those are, those are real. So I say, can you call her? get on the phone with, with my daughter and help her out. So is that right? So I got him on the phone and he goes, uh, he goes, you know, I know it, it's something like, you know, I'm a shoe connoisseur. Yeah. He goes, you tell those stupid boys what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> those shoes. And I don't know what you told her that they were. Yeah. I told her what was, they really were. They were, they were, uh, mid -berry Jordans. And I knew that what the, what the young boys probably thought was they look similar in color to like the original reds which are like a three to five thousand dollar sneaker and they were made like in 1986 yeah they're like the, so they so i'm sure these these young boys thought they were reps because they probably thought she was rocking three to five thousand dollar sneakers and they're like there's no way they're real yeah. so they're gonna tease her when everything they were saying was bullshit like all that she she bought them from a 
very reputable place that authenticates shoes. So it's they weren't fake. The box was legit. Everything about them, the, the, and they were legit colors, legit everything. And so they're just a bunch of. And more likely, I what I think you alluded to at one point to us off air was that you know they're probably boys that like her and yeah. just trying it's, to. It's a flirt. Yeah. It's a, it's a really bad flirt. Like yeah. back then, you don't know how to get girls' attention, and so you see something and you're like, ah, yeah. Oh, bro, the smile on her face though, because before I got him on the phone, because at first he called her. And because I gave him her number and then she didn't want to answer. I don't want to talk to anybody because she's super upset. And I said, listen, honey, I said, your uncle Adam owns literally probably hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of shoes. Like he collects them. He knows more about shoes than anybody. So I got him the phone and then he's using all the the shoe lingo. (laughs) So she knows that he's, you know, and then the smile on her face. And then he texted her. He's like, this is what you tell the stupid boys. And he said, I was like, ammo coming in. I bet she came back to school. So hot. She was smiling so hard. Man, kids are rough, dude. Kids are, kids are uh, really, really. And I, you know, I I actually went down the rabbit hole after you sent that to me because I had never heard actually the term reps before. That was actually new to me. When we were kids, you just call them fakes or knockoffs or like, you know, so somebody. But, uh, and of course, so I went down the rabbit hole and thought, man, there's, uh, they have really come a long ways with, uh, with replicas. In fact, there's a lot of people that straight up rock them and they know their reps, but they've done like the sneaker game has came up so much back when, okay, I got, I bought a pair of fake sneakers like uh, two decades ago, not knowing, right. I thought somebody was hooking me up with the real deal. And the way I found out was they like fell apart within like two months. <laughs> the I had first focus. Yeah, like after yeah. the first time I walked through a puddle, like the <laughs> soles came out. So like, Isn't that the worst yeah. feeling though? Yeah. Well, you know what's crazy is oh. I re- so they were my favorite Jordans because uh, I played. I, I they were my my team shoe, and so I, he had them, and I was so excited. This was back. This is before uh, they started re releasing them. So I should have known them, but I was naive, and I bought them. And I remember the the second I put them on, they just didn't feel right. But they looked right at mm-hmm. the first glance, and then of course over a, you know a month of wearing them, like they completely fell apart. Or well, now they have these you know replicas that actually sell for the same price that the the real ones sell for. So they're not cheap. Like you're paying full price for them uh, because they they totally look, different game they're playing. Yeah, they and and it, it's gotten so popular because the resale market has got so crazy. Because there are some of these J's that will turn around and sell for three five thousand dollars. So you can make, and if you do a good job of making like a, a very real looking replica, people will still pay one fifty for them. Wow! So you've got these people that are that are that are making these shoes, and and so there is a there is a, a genre of people that are like rock replicas and like yeah fuck yeah the replicas. I'm, why would I pay five thousand dollars for these things? Ninety nine percent of the people that walk by have no <laughs> idea that they're fake, but. You know, just crazy how you know kids are in high school. Man. Well, just, I mean, I tell you what, because oh, yeah. you you guys both have little boys, and I don't know, it's just something about um, yeah, your daughter. Yeah, like if my son got bothered, I it always bother me, right? Um, and I would tell him like, you need to handle it, and do this and that. But then you think of your daughter with boys. I don't know. I think it's because it's a bigger threat or whatever. Plus, I know, boy, like I'm a boy, right? And so I know how guys can be, uh, especially at 13 years old, 14 years old. Mm-hmm. And so just the fumes were just coming out of my head. Like, thank God they were just making fun of her shoes and they didn't like do something else. Cause it would have been, all, it would have been all bad, <laughs> but yeah, they're probably flirting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know how stupid we are. We, I told my, this, I also told my daughter this, I said, honey, I said, guys don't figure out how to flirt until we're like 30. I said, we're, <laughs> I mean, we're really dumb for a long time Yeah. on that kind of stuff. And we'll say the opposite of what we mean. And we'll think that making you feel bad is how we're going to get you to like us or whatever. I said, we're just dumb. I said, they're not evil. They're just stupid. I said, so you got to understand that right now. Yeah. They're just insecure and, and trying to get your attention for the most part and yeah. messing it up. Well, I, t- I told you guys a story. My brother, when he was in sixth grade, he had a huge crush on a girl. So what does he do when they're Poor running to get in line? No, he <laughs> tripped her and she oh, broke both her arms. Oh my God, that's right. He'll <laughs> 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 you you never live that down. Can you imagine? That's the worst. Yeah, the hugest. Can you imagine having hey, like a massive bro. crush on some girl and think you're flirting with her? You. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you, hey, you know what's funny? Hey, Hugh, he had a huge crush on this girl. Trips her, she breaks, she falls and breaks both arms. Both arms. She has to go both to school with in cast. She's like this. He did. So his punishment was. How he had, did he not get killed by the father? Well, so he's, he's, lucky, he's right. a little kid, right? And he was he was crying when he did uh, it. He was crying. He felt so bad, uh, right? Okay. 
So oh, and so then he had to do her work for her. He had to handwrite all her work for her until her arms were broken. <laughs> anyway, this girl ends up becoming a, a like international model. Like <laughs> later on, no way, really? yeah, dude, they were friends. Oh, wow, and I always man. tease my brother. I'm always like, you can never date her, dude. <laughs> You're the guy that <laughs> broke her <laughs> arms. Where he traumatized her. Oh, She'll never go geez. out with you. He's happily married now and all that stuff. So this is all joking. But you, you know, that was- speaking of kids, I always I always don't want to sound like a like a a, a grumpy old boomer when I do stuff like this, and so. I, I I hold back when I have experiences where I I, I meet like the you know where we like, oh that younger generation they're so this so they're social like, we always sound yeah. like that you know mm. I came home and I was I was like that Katrina's like what's wrong with you and I'm like you know it's not me I know it's not me because it happened in the same day by two different in two different situations this generation is just weird with like social interaction mm-hmm. I go first I'm I'm driving home and I have this like. I haven't had a speed stack in forever. And I'm like, feeling, Whoa, where'd you find a speed stack? Well, so I, I go, what? I pull into our old 24 hour fitness in hopes to find, obviously not the original with the ephedra, but oh, they, I was, they, they, I was excited yeah. for a second. Yeah, yeah, no. So I pull in and I walk in and there's a kid, there's a kid working and it's, and it's actually a dead time in the gym. Like nobody's, nobody's really in there. The guy behind the counter, I wa- he, first of all, he doesn't say hi. He just kind of looks at me all weird. And I point over to the, cause I'm not going to walk in to work out. I was just getting an interview. I was like, Oh, I was just getting a, a drink. And he just kind of like kind of head nods me already kind of awkward interaction. I go over, grab the drink I'm, and I'm scanning it up and he's got uh, AirPods in his ears. At the front desk? At the front desk. And so I asked him like, oh, who's the GM here? Because I was curious who's yeah. working there because it's been so long since we've been in there. And he you know, pulls one out. Huh? And I'm like, oh, wh- who's the GM here? And he's like, oh, Jerry or some of that. And then he puts it back in. <laughs> While he's working? Yeah, then it turned his back on me. And then I tried wow. to say something again to him. And obviously the music was playing loud enough that he didn't hear me again. So I just said, whatever, forget it. So I'm already like, God, it's so terrible. Like, I would, I'm, I'm also thinking Sounds about- Sounds like free workouts at that Well, time. man, I I, right I, in. <laughs> I'm thinking about when I was like in, managing these head. places. I'm going like, I would be livid if I caught that, you know, or seeing that, like no high in the first place, playing head, playing music in while you're doing that. Yeah, so, so that so rude. That's like like at one o'clock in the afternoon. Well, then uh, it's like five or so, and uh, Katrina's like, "Oh, I'm really craving pizza. Can we do pizza tonight?" I'm like, "Yeah, I, I feel like pizza. That sounds good." So we order it from this pizza parlor, and I show up to go pick it up. Girl, similar age, is working behind there, and uh, I, I come walking up, and again, weird greeting. Like just, I come walking up to the register to obviously buy or order a pizza or pick up my order, and she's just like, "Yes." I'm, oh, I, I ordered a pizza. It's under Adam. Can I can I pick it up? And she goes, oh, okay. And then she turns around and, and and then yells my name and then and then comes back. And I said, oh, I wanted to get uh, six sides of ranch too, please. And she goes, oh, that's more money. I go, well, yeah, I figured that. And she goes, okay. So then she she's like, she rings me up for the ranches. Cost me like four dollars and fifty cents. And I go, what about the pizza? And she goes, oh, well, just do the ranch. And I'm like. Okay, so I do my card for four dollars fifty cents, sign the receipt, this and that. Then out comes the pizza, literally like thirty seconds later, and then she does the whole transaction again for the pizza separately, and then I sign for that, and I'm standing there, and she looks at me again. She goes, "What?" She said like that. Yeah, I go, "Can I get my ranch?" And she goes, "Oh, oh, sorry," and then runs over because we're. I'm just like. Dude, the the customer service with these <laughs> and the the awkwardness of the conversations with and I like to think that I'm a, I'm like a social person when I come to the, like a, a place combative. Yeah, <laughs> just like, how old would you say these kids were? Tw- at the latest twenty five or six. At the youngest nineteen twenty. You got it. You know what I think? Somewhere in that range. You know what I think? I'm gonna crap everybody out, but I really do think, mm. and, and we're I think we're people are starting to see this. Actually, the data is starting to show this. I think the pandemic really fucked up. It has guys. to. It, it really it's, fucked them to, up. For dude. that to happen in the same day like that, I just feel like Well, for like two years, especially here in California, a lot of these kids' social interactions declined yeah. tremendously. And then when they had them they wore masks, which covers your facial expressions. And that part of the brain requires facial. I mean, we read, you know how much of communication is nonverbal? It's like a majority of it. You know what? And so I think it really had a profound effect. I, I agree. And I told Katrina, Easily. like, I don't, um, like, I didn't feel like either one of them were like in a bad mood or trying to be rude. I literally think that just they clueless. just, just clueless. Mm-hmm. Like it did not come off as like that she's being bitchy or he was being a dick. I just literally think that they think that, that, 
those practices like are that's okay. acceptable. Yeah, that, that's yeah. okay to to act like that in that situation. And, and I'm like, wow, that is wild. Well, you know, it's such a big disconnect. You know, what's funny about that. So um, Jessica's super, super staunch about not letting um, Aurelius watch too much TV. She's really against lots of TV and electronic time. Now that doesn't mean he doesn't watch TV, but she's very, very judicious with it, and she will not put on any recent type of educate uh, like uh, entertainment for children. So she puts on Sesame Street, not Sesame Street now, but Old when school. we were kids, yeah. uh, Mr. Rogers, and then there's a cartoon called Franklin that she puts on. Now, you know what they all have in common? They're slow, slow as paced. hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching them, and they're slow as hell. And so I, her and I had this conversation. She did lots of research, and she says, you know, the quick cuts mm -hmm. in the scenes and the changing directions and doing all that stuff, that really encourages this kind of fragmented, you know, poor attention span yes, in children. The terrible attention span. I noticed that specifically, especially with all my kids' friends uh, that are just glued to their devices and just the way that they talk to you as an adult. Uh, they want to get out of the conversation as quick as possible and, and have no patience in terms of like interacting and communicating. So well, we well, do the same thing. With Max, like Same. intentionally do that. You watch this the slow. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Like I love like uh, Einstein Kids or like that. Yeah. Like shows that are like slower, more educational. Bro, when's the last time you watched Mr. Rogers? Yeah, it's oh, it's super. Slow. I watched. Well, I mean, he intentionally. Remember, he he would, on purpose. Yeah, would like yeah. let's he'll, put he'll count one the minute. Of seconds. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. as I'm watching, I'm like, and it, what a difference in my son yeah. when he does that versus when we put on some of the other stuff. Uh, that's super. Speaking of this gener this younger generation doing crazy shit. Did you guys see this? Is this real? They said, please don't marinate your chicken in NyQuil. There's this new yeah, NyQuil yeah. chicken. That was a TikTok challenge. That, did uh, you hear about this? Oh, that's what it was. Okay, so I did see it, but I didn't know. It, I assumed that it was probably something stupid. It's another like one of those it. Tide Pod things that just became like, oh, this is actually becoming a trend, and we need to address this and be like, no, this is not a good idea for you guys to do Why this. would you cook chicken in NyQuil? Does it make you high? Like, what's I have the no point? idea. Isn't it wild that the news has already came out? Like, it's now, it's, I don't know if it's common knowledge, but more people know that the whole algorithm is different for us than it is like in China yeah. and yet we still just we don't care we don't care just we don't care give me more NyQuil and chicken well, come on how many things do give people more do Tide Pods? that's bad for them they don't care you know? yeah just wild though I know it's so interesting to me I know although you did bring up something I don't remember if it was on a previous episode uh, it might have been Adam where you, you you speculated that the trend for the younger generation is going to be to be less on social I, media. I do, I do, I do think that. You know, I've been thinking a lot about that, and I, I think, I think you're right. I think mm -hmm. that that may be. I don't know how far it's going to go, but I could see that being a thing mm -hmm. where they're just they use it so much, and this younger generation coming up is like, ah, it's dumb. I don't want to be on yeah, those things. I think it's the sense of like an overbearing presence of everybody being in your business too, because it's like you know that you don't have privacy. There's no privacy online. There's it, no privacy in any social setting. You could pretend that you have apps that control that, but it's not true. And so like these kids are getting more privy to that and, and realizing the only way that they can literally be away from the adults is to either play. I mean, even their video games, it's like in chatting, they're going to realize that that gets monitored. So to do things, you know, with each other outside of the adults, yeah. I think that might become more appealing. Well, it's just, it's become so fake and extra and the filters. And so the the new generation of cool kids see that. And they're just like, oh, it's, so I, it's 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 coming the other way. I feel like they're going just like, well, I don't even pay attention to that shit anymore. Half of it's fake. I mean, I remember when I brought that stat up, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago about the the face altering yeah. filter, how many yeah. millions oh, yeah. of people down yeah. with that. That means millions of them photos that everybody's looking at that think, you know, I mean, everybody's not, airbrushed. Yeah, everybody's airbrushed or they've changed their waistline. And so, you know, like the kids are smart. They figure that out. And then after a while, they're like, why would I waste my time on that stupid thing? So I, I, I think it's, I think it's coming back. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, speaking of weird, yeah, I, I, I read about a school, like I should have saved it. Maybe Doug can find it. I read about the school where this girl, I, the student identifies as a cat and the school agreed to validate that she's a cat. So they treat her like she's a cat when she goes to school. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. That. And and I, and I was reading the comments under this article and some people are like, well, they're helping the girl to, but I'm like, they're not helping her by encouraging this crazy <laughs> reality that's not real. Well, are there such thing as mental disorders anymore? 
No, no I think no. They, maybe can we even talk like, about that? Is no. that illegal? I yeah, like to, to say that somebody has a mental problem, yeah. we should address. I don't know, Doug. Did you find it? What is that? Teen who identifies a cat allowed by school to act feline and not speak. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's ridiculous, dude. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, you know what though? We got to bring back paddling. So the thing I I, <laughs> I said that I, I feel like, I feel like I, some states already do. I don't that. know. I don't even know what to believe anymore because half the now I think it's yeah. Am I getting trolled? Just yes. Like, I I actually think it's gone maybe so the, extreme. Maybe the kids like I don't want to fucking do school what, anymore. No, I okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, now this is this chat. is something I would do as a totally. kid. I was the type of kid that would would think this is so ridiculous and dumb that the way I would buck the system would be by trolling the school. I would get with my buddies and be like, "Let's let's pretend like we're dogs. Like, oh, baby, <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be a dog for the and like we would like push yeah. the like that's let's the type Mrs. of kid that Mrs. I was. Robinson will feed us dogs. Yeah, yeah. Let's, <laughs> we're gonna, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, hey, bro. I'm gonna take a shit on the grass. <laughs> yeah, and no one's gonna say anything. Watch. <laughs> I mean, that's totally my buddies and I. We would totally do some shit like that to mess with. I can see us making a bet like that. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to act like That's dogs. Right. Let's see who gives up first. Yes. You know? <laughs> Wouldn't you? I feel like we, if we saw this, come on. You, you, if you saw that, if this was happening in, in our in our era when we were in school, do not tell me that we are not the group of guys For that would sure have like, be in on that. Yeah. Would totally like be like, you know what? Let's let's see. Okay, they want to go that route. Okay, yeah. let's go. Let's yeah. see. Yeah. Let's see. Who's gonna wear my start, furrier suit. Dude. Start yeah. smelling people's butts and. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I have I have something I wanted to share. Doug, will you pull up? I want to see. Hopefully, the news article when it comes up. Uh, fentanyl, fentanyl, and Halloween candy. Oh, I and heard I want to, this. And I want to hear what your guys' initial thoughts, because I have a thought around so this. So every year there's there's something, right, with the candy. And so this is rotating. So what can they promote fear well, in the hearts of every <laughs> well, parent? So hold on. I have a family member that works, I think I can say this, for the FBI. So she works in the FBI. Okay. And part of her job, and she can't tell us much, because apparently what she does is kind of like classified. But she's sending us articles and saying, hey – candy colored, very strong fentanyl. So yeah. these are pills that are candy colored and they have like little stamps on them. Yes, like little yes. kids will like. That's the article I read. It's circulating right now. Okay. So the fact that you have some inside FBI will is makes my thought or makes my theory wrong if if you're right because I don't believe it. Uh, I yeah. just uh well I've been around I've been around that. that space let's say for a, a decent part of my life and I've never Met a drug dealer that would give away his drugs. Yeah, no, that's stupid. Yeah, you're right. Never, I've never, ever, ever, and especially and neighborhoods, especially are we to about kids here? who are not return customers, children, uh, giving away my you drugs. You're gonna get free drugs. Yeah, you're no, not. You're no. never one. You're never gonna give away, give away free drugs. And and by the way, some people are like, oh, they're trying to do it so they get hooked and get them away. like. Okay, Dude. you're not the kid's passing not gonna out. Know what happened? That's right. The kids aren't going to know what happened. So you're not, and he doesn't know where it came from. So he's not. That's that's a stupid theory that they're trying to get them hooked at an early age so they could sell them what ten years later and hope they cross yeah. paths. No, it, no. What, what they did was is that there's definitely candy colored, and because you know this is what this is what uh, the black market does. They'll take drugs and they'll make it look cute. Sure, right? They'll put it. They'll put a stamp on it for like a bunny or whatever. That's the that's why everybody's freaking out, and there have been some overdoses in high schools of kids using this this new yeah that's all fentanyl. true. Yeah, but, but I can't you just but stick people, with the tried and year, true candies every you know, year. Just monitor it that yeah, way. But, it, but I agree with you, bro. Nobody's putting their drugs in. If you know anybody who has drugs, the last thing they're going to do is give it away. No, <laughs> to people, yeah, especially to kids, kids, especially yeah. to kids who aren't going to be return customers. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe. Okay, if you're a, like a, just a, a great marketing drug dealer, you you know who to give some of your adult friends some free stuff that hopefully they get hooked and come back to you. Yeah. But you are not dropping it in some random stranger's bag. That makes no, no. sense no. whatsoever. <laughs> and and I've never met a drug dealer that is not a hardcore hustler who doesn't care about money. Yeah. And there's no way they're losing that kind of money to harm kids. That is a dumbest theory yeah, that's why i stick to candy corn right during shit and candy corn <laughs> no, <it's right>. but, <laughs> but but just no, pure delicious it's it's disgusting. Disgusting. that's yeah, my favorite that's one that is. i'm the only one hey, that i know that likes candy okay, corn. So crazy we're, we're gonna stay on this this theme of like ridiculous kid stuff right that i check this out look up uh vlogger play set tell mm -hmm. me what you think about this oh no this is something that you can buy for kids I, now. No, it's I can not. guess. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's it's, so it's like they have. Look at look at bro. My it's life a fake is a vlogger. It is a vlogger whole oh it's, yeah fake God. light. The camera. The whole like thing. the ring light. Yes, the, the fake oh ring light. You see it, Doug? Dude. Yeah, I see it. 
Dude, I'm pulling it up. Can here. you blow it up for the guys to look at it? Why would you want your kid to play that? I just, you know, you know, who, my daughter, my daughter said she wanted to start a YouTube channel. I said you can have a YouTube channel as long as you're not on it. Well, why would I make one then? I don't care. Think of something else. But you're not going to be on your look freaking at, YouTube look channel. At, yeah. Wow. Look Little selfie that. stick included. The the camera stand. The fake lighting. Is that wild or what? Wow. Yeah. And you know what? Only four left in stock. They must be selling them out like crazy. Oh, does it say? Oh. Yeah, right there. Wow. Holy Toledo. That's crazy. I Isn't mean, that wild? From their perspective, like, who do they idolize? Who do they think That's true. is killing well, it I right mean, now? from I mean, from, a, from a, a toy brand, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. I, I mean, mean that's there. where they're spending the most time is is well, watching if their you're a mom and dad buying favorite that? influencer break things down well, for Justin, them. Justin, when you ask your kids, their friends, right? Because your son, your oldest is my daughter's age and your youngest is younger. Yeah. How many of their friends say they want to be a YouTuber YouTube stars? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's a common. That's the majority. That's a majority. It's now. a common theme. Yeah, but that's what they think they want. Oh no! This I thought I saw a poll on that. Like the they're like that is completely yeah. shifted to that. Like it used to be like athlete, actor, actress, like these or lawyer, doctor, all these mm -hmm. things like that. Like the number one thing for like the the generation coming up is, is and they all movie. think that they're gonna be a star. Right? I told like hey, it's, <laughs> I told my cousin that. I told my little cousin, I want to be a YouTuber. I said, you have a better chance of becoming an astronaut. Yeah, it's like <laughs> than being a famous YouTuber. Would it just just because it's a low hard. barrier <laughs> entry, you know, it's like you get yeah. this misconception that like you're all of a sudden get all these followers and be better than whoever you're watching uh, right now. It's, and it's, oh, speaking of watching, so I put on the Dahmer series that oh, we're talking about. Yes. Okay, so you know, uh, you know what's okay, so I'm so, so creepy. Well, huh? here's why I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted because you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> why am I aroused? Because I'm always hungry I'm afterwards. Like, oh, yeah. I've always <laughs> liked meat. Honey, you know, go you get the liver trying. out of the fridge. Yeah. I no, here's why I'm conflicted, because I know, I know this from the data. This is a fact that glorifying yeah, um, yeah, I know. serial killers creates This is what I said. I, I, mean, I said one of the things that yeah. I thought was most dis disrupt or, uh, disturbing is that it's like the number one yes, watch show. Yes, the number show. one everywhere. Yikes. You know what's crazy too? Okay, so check this out. People are going to dress up like him for Halloween. Yep. Okay. Imagine if somebody went around dressed, around, dressed up like Hitler. Would people accept that? I've seen that. Where yeah, like that would be very unacceptable. a long time ago. Yeah. Like, like, but like it was. You it see was that college kids part, joking college and, parties. You see it was like, oh my god. But like, even but imagine boundaries. imagine today if someone was walking around like Hitler, people would be like, you better take that off or whatever. Exactly. Right? Dahmer. Everybody's like, oh, that's cool. You're like Dahmer. What we're doing is we're glorifying. Yeah. The, and what happens is people who are like borderline crazy. Mm -hmm. Part of part of their the issue is they want to go out with a bang. Yeah, yeah. So I was conflicted. Now, besides that, it's super disturbing because uh, it's, well it's done. real, bro. It's when well I watched done. it, I'm like, when he, when he lobotomized that kid or whatever, I was like, oh, come on, man. That's messed up, dude. That was like the second episode, third episode. Oh, I mean, no, it's 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 graphic. It's eerie. It's, it, it I don't know. They did it. I haven't had a show that fucks me up nightmare-wise in a long time. Like, that's, I, I cannot watch it as the last thing that I watch before going to bed because it's. It, what do you, what do you, okay, so let's say you watch Dahmer and you're like, I got to go to bed. What do you put on as a buffer? Uh, I normally like Katrina uh, picked those. I think it was Bling Ring <laughs> last time. What yeah. is that? It's like a yeah, Asian reality show, like rich, super filthy rich people. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you. We're going to hang out and watch a movie. I don't, I, I don't I know. Do that or that. Tell uh, me a, Terry, a real fairy tale show, right? Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The models. That's that, like, if I'm by myself. Off. That's why I will. That's Max and I's favorite show. Oh, yeah, it's we Max. like. Yeah, yeah. I, I Max like, is big. I need something estate. to make me feel cozy. Taste. Put something about a lot of money on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll give you uh, that. Coming back to <laughs> Earth. Hey, speaking. Oh. Uh, speaking of money, did you guys see Viore is going, uh, going big time international? Yes. An article here. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Finally. You know how I many people from Canada and everybody that be bugging us so for the last check four this years? Out, right? They're they're going. <sighs> yeah, they just announced that. this. What they just announced, like re like in, within the last few weeks, they're launching in China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Middle East, and Mexico. So they're making those big launches right now. Wow. This company does that mean still no Canada? Big markets is crushing. Oh, uh, I think it's in Canada, isn't it? <laughs> It that would was, suck. It wasn't it, before. <laughs> they went to those places and everywhere Canada. else but yeah. Canada. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Why? What is what is it about Canada? Sorry. So many of our brands don't go to Canada, but they go to other places. What, what, are they just have really strict 
border laws? Is that that makes it difficult for like these these companies, these direct to consumer companies? That's to a get good it? question. Yeah, why is it so? I would imagine, right? Because don't you guys? I get that, that a lot. market's so similar to the ours. You I, yeah. I would I would think it would be a hard leap for that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. know. I don't know why that is, but uh, there's several brands that we work with that uh, don't go to Canada. Yeah. Fury. One, two, three, four. Canada deserves more. Fury. And I don't. I, I, I'm assuming it's something about their strict laws, or else it, it's random that we have all these brands in common that yeah. they just don't go. But to the, Canada. oh, they are in Canada, Doug. Yeah. Said. Oh, good. Yeah, they're in Canada. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. good. My oh, brother good. fell in love with these pants. What are these called? The Meta? Are these Meta? That's Meta, right? Total Meta. You got the dude. same ones. You, these aren't uh, Fury. Oh, never mind. Sorry. No, I was I just wanna, wondering why they, tag looks, on your they look so shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Seams are all busted. Yeah, out, what's going on with your ugly old ass? And, I, you know, I, I don't, did we share with the audience that we, <laughs> we had, we had to do like a photo shoot just recently? Like, it, it so far, I can count on one hand how We're many- We're not good at the face I, stuff. I know. I can count on one hand how many things we don't like doing in this business. I'm, I feel so blessed that we built something that I truly enjoy- Pretty much every aspect of it, mm -hmm. the the like the, posing and pretending, yes, the, I can't do the it. The photo shoot stuff, just, <laughs> I just it's so awkward. It oh, never it never isn't. Yeah, it's yeah Sal, pretend like you're reading awkward. the label. We almost uh, always get frustrated and irritated with each other. You know this? I know. Yeah, because we just no one. You could tell no one likes it. Doug doesn't like it's having to shoot up. us. Yeah. We don't like having to pose. So it ends up being like one fighting amongst each other. It's like, well, like, fucking uh, Doug, tell me then. Tell me it looks stupid. Why would you let me make that face? And then Doug's like, yeah, Doug's like, you know, do something. It's like, what do you mean do something? Tell yeah. me what to do. What do I do with my hands? Doug, just take pictures of us being ourselves. We're just yeah. hanging out over yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. We act normal. This uh, is not normal. Right. So. Dude, so I I had quite a busy weekend. Uh, Friday, I actually decided to go up and, and do another concert venue, which I'm just- I saw that. I'm, I'm, a, God? I'm addicted. Yeah, so they were on the bill, but there was a bunch of bands oh, there. Oh, what? It was Aftershock. So it was up in Sacramento. There was like tons of these rock bands. Um, and Did you we, go with the same friends? So I just went, no, I went with my brother because oh, okay. he lives up in, in Benicia. And so I, I went up there with him. And then um, we were going to try to make it to one of our buddies. He's a big fan of the show, supporter of our show, Christian. He's uh, the guitarist for Falling in Reverse. Oh, this yeah. So I got, yeah, that guitar from him. Um, and so I was able to make it for, for his performance, which was cool and everything, but it was like, dude, there's thousands of people there and it was just like hot as hell. Um, and so it was like, it just didn't happen as an opportunity, but he was like, he was already there kind of backstage and stuff. So I kind of missed out on an opportunity to come say hi and hang out. So I'll have to do that again. And, and he, he wanted to hang out with you guys as well, but is the event now, was this, how was it similar or different to the one you went to in, um, Alabama? so, okay, let's, let's, let's break this down. Um, <laughs> The other, <laughs> the other festival was like a completely different culture. I just wanted to talk about this because it was like hilarious to me, like, like stepping in because it's Sacramento already. You're, you're dealing with a different breed of person. Mm. I mean, it, it's, it's different. I like it. It's, it's interesting, but it's different. Uh, we walk in. So first of all, just to, to kind of paint the picture, there's a guy selling puka shells. Uh, as you're walking up. They're coming the back, bro. <laughs> like, They're coming back. I was like, how puka shells, dude. Adam? How many puka shells did you wear? I kept them. I still got them. No, you don't. No, I don't. Yeah. No, I, don't. I wish I did, though. Yeah, I, I swear to God, like the uniform is like a uh, temporary barbed wire tattoo. Um, you know, you got puka shells and, and then you have like spiky hair. What the uh, hell? It, it, it literally looks like 1992 exploded in like Hot Topic store just exploded. All <laughs> what the place. heck? Yeah. It was like everybody looked literally like they walked right out of the mall. Uh, now, was it an older crowd or younger crowd? Must be they? younger. It, it, it older, oh. actually. Well, maybe they just kept the same clothes they had when they were two. Years <laughs> <ago>. <laughs> they just didn't yeah. change. A lot of, a lot of golf. Yeah, that's that's Sal's kind of strategy. He's been, yeah. he's been saying that for Going a while. On. Like a broken yeah. clock. You yeah. know? I mean, ours isn't any better. Like, so just the difference in being the other festival is that it was like, you know, a lot of like full body tats and like ear gauges and like, you know, long shorts and, and real pulled up uh, socks and like very cholo kind of, mm. you know, gangster looking people. And it was, you know, a completely different thing. But it was just funny to me because I'm trying to like get down to Lamb of God and they're a really heavy band. 
And like, you could just tell, like, nobody knew what to do uh, with that kind of music. And they were just kind of like jumping and kind of bouncing into each other. And I'm just like trying to throw people and start this huge oh hit. And <laughs> nobody's on board. And I'm just like, well, you're terrifying. Maybe that's why it's Justin. No, I'm like, dude, this is Lamb of God. Get the hell out of the way. That big guy over there is throwing people. Did you yeah. go solo or are you with somebody? Brother. So I was with my brother and he's not uh, the, the mosh guy so i he was like didn't know what to down, do throw so i there. literally grabbed him and i threw him in like like getting swept in i'm like dude it's not bad these people don't even they're not throwing any kind of dangerous things out there you're gonna be fine and he was fine <laughs> nobody got hurt you know it was a good time Doug, when is when is this episode uh, officially air? What day? Uh, on Friday. Oh, this Friday. Mm-hmm. Oh, so we'll miss it. Never mind. Well, it doesn't even matter now. Well, I actually will tell the audience because I'm I'm going to do this on a more regular basis. I don't know if I told you guys or not, but you know, uh, my buddy Chris Nagibi from the Higher Standards Podcast. Yes. So <clears throat> him and I talk all the time. Just uh, I just respect. Uh, He's super smart. Yeah, super smart guy. I mean, he's a, a, a lawyer, broker, and banker. Um, and I love bouncing things off with him real estate wise. So I thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool. I get a lot of questions around that. And so I just thought it would be uh, neat content and we'll see where it goes, where when I have these calls with him is to do it live on my story. So m- our audience could hear the questions that I'm asking when we're looking at a particular area, or if I'm concerned about what's going on uh, with interest rates or whatever. And so you, they can hear us kind of have dialogue back and forth about the market since awesome. I get a lot of questions and see, and if it gets good traction and I get a lot of people paying attention and saying that they, they got value from it. Um, I'll, I'll do it on a more regular basis right now. I think we're going to start uh, bi-weekly. So twice a month, I'll do it on Fridays, uh, Friday afternoon. And so, uh, so even though you probably missed it or, uh, from this episode, I will going forward, uh, let people know ahead of time that it'll be on a Friday afternoon and I'll you pay attention to my story. That's where I'll, that's I'll awesome. put, I'll put it in there. Hey, speaking of value, uh, did you guys see NCI's giveaway? Cause they keep doing giveaways, right? For Is this the one, is this going to be the one where they include the in-person here? You get a full scholarship oh, okay. plus you come to mind pump headquarters, uh, with, Jason. Oh yeah. All expenses paid and you sit in on an episode. So full ride scholarship, meaning you get all their education, all the stuff that you would normally pay for. Plus he will fly you over here to California, sit in on an episode and Justin will give you a, a wow. pair of signs. What's the board. total value of that Doug? Does it have, does, so he, have, does he have it broken down? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. I remember when he, Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he does. Brand, he does. Marker. It's $15,000 plus wow. whatever the, you know, flight is and everything else. Yeah, that's great. Be a wow. good time. So messy signature. Whoever whoever wins this, be great meeting you. Yeah, it's we'll, be a lot of fun. We'll, we'll see you there, huh? Hey, real quick, check this out. There's a company we work with called LMNT, and they make electrolyte powder that has the right amount of sodium to propel your workouts, give you better pumps, and to make you feel better. Plus, it tastes great. No artificial sweeteners. And right now, they're offering free sample packs with any order. So you get eight single serving packets for free with any LMNT order. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, our first caller is Boss from Belgium. Boss, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys, uh, really nice to meet you. First of all, I want to say uh, you had an amazing impact on my life since I uh, started listening to you guys. I've been... uh, some uh, a guy like Sal who totally overtrains a lot, but uh, <laughs> a little bit of background. Um, I've been always an athletic uh, child. I did swimming for 13 years, but then at age 14, around 14, 15, I totally quit swimming. And then I got uh, actually really fat because of gaming. And uh, at age 16, I was around 116 kilos. So, uh, and then I, uh, at age 17, I found fitness. I made a shift. I got to 70 kilos again. And uh, now 10 years later, I'm at around close to 90 kilos, um, pretty lean. So now my question is, um, lately I've been uh, more focused into fighting. So I, um, I currently do one day of uh, jujitsu and two days of kickboxing in the week. But um, I wanted to know how you guys would approach um, putting lifting in there. 
because uh, I really do enjoy training full bodies or push pull legs. But I know uh, if I do uh, kickboxing two days and jiu-jitsu one day, I can easily overtrain because I also have a very demanding uh, job with a lot of steps, heavy packages I have to carry, stuff like that. So, uh, Good deal. Important yeah. question first. How's your ranking on Call of Duty? <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, the last five five years, I haven't uh, gamed. So, <laughs> good deal. In, in your question, boss, it, o it also says that you swim. So you do jujitsu. You do jujitsu once, two days a week of kickboxing, kickboxing and then you and swim, swim once a week. Any other demand? Yeah, I swim around thirty to forty five minutes. You know, uh, once a week of, of full body strength training would be yeah. it. That's all I would do, and I would keep the intensity moderate. I would do maybe maybe three compound lifts and maybe one. Um, like, you know, ancillary lift and that's it. Keep it super basic and keep the intensity very moderate. And what you'll find is it'll, it, it'll improve your performance in jujitsu and kickboxing. If you're, if adding strength training reduces your performance in all of those, in other words, you go to practice and you find that you're just more fatigued and stiff and sore and you can't really train like you normally could then the lifting is too much. There's too much volume or too much intensity uh, or too many exercises. So it, it, if, if it makes everything else feel good, then you're doing the right thing. If it takes away from everything else, then you're probably doing too much. So generally speaking, you're looking at about 40 minutes of strength training or 60 minutes if you do long rest periods where it's just very basic, very basic. You know, like I said, three compound lifts, one or two, ancillary lifts and that's kind of it boss are you are you following any of our programs yet yeah so i've uh, i've done maps anabolic a couple of times but i adjusted uh, a couple of exercises because i have a lot of experience i also did strong um and i also did uh, aesthetic yeah now keep in mind our programs are designed to be run alone so when someone buys one of our programs it, we're considering that they don't do other workouts and stuff like that on their own. But considering you do so much, um, our programs as written would be inappropriate. They're, they're just going to be too much for you. So I would take one of the foundational workouts from one of our workouts and you can pick either MAPS Performance or Anabolic or Strong. And I would do that one workout once a week, but I would even cut that a little short. I would even remove some of the extra, you know, ancillary lifts that are in there and just kind of focus on the compound stuff. And that should make you feel good. And you should know right away, boss, once you do it within the first week or two, you should feel good. If you feel fried or, or too tired or, or, or sore or stiff, then it's probably too much. I, I, I like to give you uh, mass performance because I think that uh, because you're an, you're an athlete and you're doing all these sports, I think that workout will translate the most over into the sports that you're playing as far as being beneficial. Plus, let's say you have a, a heavy week of training and doing sports and all the things you're doing, uh, you know, instead of actually doing a lifting day, maybe you'll take a mobility day out of there mm -hmm. and that, and be a little more recuperative for the body. And that's how I actually would use performance. So like Sal's advice, I would only be strength training one day, maybe max two days a week. If you have a, like a slow week on sports, uh, and or utilizing the mobility days as active recovery. So on days when you, got after it pretty hard. Maybe the next day after, you know, jujitsu or swimming or something like that, I do like a nice mobility workout to help uh, facilitate recovery. So I think that program, in my opinion, would benefit you the most. Yeah. By the way, you, you, a lot of people don't know this, but Belgium's got some of the best fighters in the world, uh, of all time. So I'm sure you're a big fan of, of some of those guys like, uh, God, what was his name? Garigium. Am I saying his right name? Right. And, uh, is boss Rutten? Was he from Belgium? Yes, I think so. Yes. Oh yeah, good fighters, right. good places. Yeah, kickboxing one of the one of the best places in the world for kickboxing. The hell out of everybody, a lot of people <laughs> don't know that. So, yeah. good for you. How long have you been training in those? Uh, kickboxing, I've been doing around almost three years, and jujitsu for five months. Ah, uh, good for you. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Which one? Which one's harder for you? Uh, I think um, it's 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 a uh, pretty. Uh, I think. Jiu-jitsu uh, jiu is harder, but um, kickboxing is more demanding on my muscles. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I would agree. So, have, uh, I just got to ask uh, if you've ever taken like time out to um, do like an off season where you just focused on strength training exclusively, and maybe then supplementing 
you know, your, your skills training, uh, which you just, well, yeah, well, actually, um, most of my last five years were most strength training. Okay. Yeah. So, so I've been building like, up to this um, point. Like in the start, I, I've done, when I kickboxed, I only did like one day of kickboxing and I, I gone to the gym like five days. Mm-hmm. So it, it's mainly, so and I didn't, I didn't always swim. I didn't always swim, but um, yeah, my, uh, my main uh, last six years were actually on building muscle and going to the gym. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, I think then this, this is sound advice for just once a week to just supplement what you're doing now, because that's the heavy emphasis. Yeah. You want to keep, keep, you know, keep this in mind, boss, when you're, tr- when you're doing the kind of training that you're doing, the emphasis is going to be whatever you do will be to make those things better. Okay. So if you add anything and it takes away from your performance or your ability in your kickboxing and jujitsu, um, then it's not appropriate. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm wording it this way is because sometimes people, they'll start, they'll add strength training to their, their, their total regime and their, their athletes. And then they get into the mindset of aesthetics and developing muscles and looking a particular way. And then they start to sacrifice their performance, but then they get stuck in this conundrum. I don't want to reduce the amount of kickboxing I do. I don't want to reduce the amount of jujitsu I do. And I'm still trying to develop a more bodybuilder looking physique. And what ends up happening is you get nothing. Your performance drops and you don't develop the physique that you're looking for. So it's got to be one or the other. But it sounds to me like you're pretty focused on your kickboxing and jiu-jitsu. In mm-hmm. which case, like I said, your best bet is to approach strength training from a very moderate intensity level. You go in there. You practice the movements. You feel good while you do them. You should not feel at the end of your strength training workout like you do at the end of your kickboxing workout. Like when you're done with kickboxing, you need to go lay down. You feel like you just went through like, oh man, this is, that was, I got beat up. You should, you should not feel like that at all with strength training. If anything, you should feel better and rejuvenated at the end of your strength training sessions. If you do it that way, you'll get great results. If you do it, if you treat it like your kickboxing workouts or jujitsu where you're in there and you beat yourself up in the gym, all you're going to notice is everything's going to go downhill. Yeah, I already had an idea you would say something like this, but um, I had a little bit of fear because um, I'm actually really proud of the physique I built. And I had a little bit of fear that uh, it will go away because of uh, all the fighting and swimming. But I do enjoy it a lot and I want to get better on it. But I really want to not not yeah, not get skinny. Yeah, well, say in a way. well, look, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get, you, you probably will, your body will maybe pare down a little muscle, but you're not going to get skinny. I mean, kickboxing, jujitsu with a little strength training, you'll have a, an athletic, you know, muscular, you're just not going to be as big. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, it's just seasons. So you're, you're doing a season and, and your focus right now is on these, you know, sports. So, you know, but you'll come back to, to strength training and it'll, um, you know, respond appropriately. It there. comes back fast, yeah, man. Real fast. Yeah, if you it, decide to stop and go yes. back to just more strength training. But, uh, but I, I mean, yeah, you're, you're like, you know, uh, that's it. You add a little bit and you're fine. You'll, you'll, you'll notice improvements. So, so you would say uh, one day of performance each week and uh, only the mobility uh, I, I take with it. Yeah. You could do mobility whenever you want. That's, that's recuperative. Yeah. So in fact, in fact, you know how I do the mobility sessions? I would do them uh, bef- uh, before your jujitsu or kickboxing class. I would do like a like twenty minutes of mobi- mobility flow session. Mm, okay, clear. Yep. All right. All right, man. We're gonna send you performance if you don't have it. Okay, boss. Yeah, I, I have it. Uh, I have oh. it. Oh, okay. oh beautiful. Well, <laughs> yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for calling yeah, from all the way you, from Belgium. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. No thank problem. You. Yep. Take care. You got it. What uh, what what percentage would you guys guess? actually listen to us with the athletes right oh in particular i thought you're gonna ask how many people ask similar questions well yeah. so okay that's the reason why i'm bringing that up because we do get this question a lot like it's just different it's it's the same yeah. question same question different sport different right pursuit so wh- why i'm asking this is because i have this sneaky suspicion that a very small percentage actually and the reason why i think a small percentage actually listen to us is because the athletic mind yeah 100% is it, it, it it's like what i can handle and i know mm-hmm. and i love that you always say that like the the, the right dose isn't what t- technically you can handle the right dose is the right dose for your right. body yeah. and it's not the max you can tolerate that's right. not the right dose and that's and unfortunately and fortunately because that's also what makes some of these athletes really good is they have this ability to endure 
so much, right? And they become resilient yep. and they and they they've they've got good at their sport by overcoming these things. And so hearing someone like us go, "Hey, we want you to back off, you know, and yep. do le do less and you're going to probably have more muscle." I just I <laughs> well, I have these this guys are crazy. Yeah, I want to I want to believe that everybody trusts us enough that they just go listen to us. Well, but what I'm hoping is is that they cuz I you know, athletes that train quite a bit, they know this. Like I'm sure they've heard it a million times and they know it. They just don't follow it. So what I'm hoping is is that because he said, Oh, that's what I thought right, you guys right. would say. Like we confirm it and we so confirm he's like, All right, fine, I'll finally do it. I hope. I hope that's the case. Yeah. Otherwise, you learn the hard way. Because here's what'll happen if he doesn't listen. What'll happen is he'll add more and more strength training. He'll he won't pay attention to his declining performance. And then inevitably you get hurt. Yeah. You're just gonna overtrain. You get over you you end up injuring yourself in kickboxing or jujitsu. Or, you know, less detrimental and just you you don't really progress it either. That's that's right. It. Right. You're doing you're doing all this stuff and you're not really getting any more muscle and you you're not like and you're not getting really better at the sport, but you're working your ass off in both yeah. categories when it's like, you know, just kind of pulling back a little bit on the strength training and you might actually see progression in yeah. both. It's pretty cool though. He did kickboxing in Belgium. I don't know if you guys know because uh, I used to watch K one, yeah. which is a really I high level. K1 too. Belgium Belgium, the kickboxers from that area just they rewrote the books on on certain styles of kickboxing. Really? Oh yeah, and it was just it was awesome to watch them because you could see just like boxing, like they have it was like the Netherlands too. They had like a, yeah, the Dutch, yeah, Dutch, Dutch styles yeah, of kickboxing, and you'd yeah. see these. They'd finish every combo with a leg kick, and just it was brutal. It was great. And Boss Rutten, one of the most famous fighters. He wasn't necessarily a kickboxer. He fought in I think it was called. Pancras. He did that like open hand like uh, strikes, yeah. The, the right? rules the, were you couldn't close fist punch, but you could slap to the face and you yeah. would knock people just out. Just knock slaps. people out with an open <laughs> yeah, hand. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Our next caller is Travis from Virginia. Travis, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, long time listener, first time caller. Hey. Um, I'm a uh, 33 year old electrician. Been teaching full time for about four years now at our apprenticeship. Um, through my second round of anabolic at the moment, which by the way, it's I've, I've loved the program. It's been a lot of fun. Um, between my history in athletics and working in the trades, I've had some some good luck with mobility in my shoulders. Haven't had any issues, um, but I'd like to maintain that and maintain strength. Um, so I invested in a mace bell after hearing y'all talk about it. Um, got it in the mail and then realized that, you know, I don't know how to use a mace bell. So I started looking up videos and trying to figure out how to use it. And I can mirror those movements, but I don't have any idea as far as cues or what kind of muscles I should be engaging. Um, didn't know if y'all had any resources or any tips. So that way, when I do eventually try to scale up and wait, that uh, I don't rip my shoulder apart. Yeah. Um, we actually shot some video with John Wolf um, from on it. And he came in and we did a YouTube series where we just did sort of the real basics in terms of like a 360 swing, which the 360 swing for me, like covers pretty much the basis of all, um, mace movements that like it, it, it gives you the biggest bang for your buck for what you're trying to do. Um, and so there is quite a bit of technique with it in terms of like how to hold your body and make sure that, you know, everything is, is, uh, in good composure. Um, and so if you go through that, you'll, you'll see how we kind of break down each step. Um, and, and he kind of, he shows me how to kind of hold it up. So, um, it's, it's going to be at the most effective angle. Um, but it, this is just something to like, what, what, um, weight did you get? Like, did you, did you get a 20 pounder, 15 or 10 pounder? Like, did you, did you start with a lighter one or, or the heavy one? Uh, I got started off with the 10 pound, which has been oh, pretty forgiving. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So just go through that series and we kind of break down each part of the movement. Um, it's, it's really about control and like being able to, uh, be loose when you need to be loose and be able to sort of, uh, create muscle tension to decelerate the movement. Um, so a lot of it is just based on control and, and, and flexibility, um, uh, to create that sort of stable environment there in your shoulders, but, uh, great. It's a great uh, tool and a great exercise uh, to improve upon and like build that skill. Uh, I actually would suggest even that uh, you start with, I would say, a kettlebell and doing um, some halos with that to start just to get that rotation um, down pat and to be able to kind of get through that, um, bringing it overhead and then right behind your head. So I don't know how much your external rotation 
is, um, but the wall test that we have in Prime would be a great way to kind of test that and see what your ability is with that first. Uh, and and because a lot of times, like we don't we don't press anything behind our head anymore. That's been kind of like shunned and and taken out of people's programming or even doing pull ups behind our heads. So we don't have really good external rotation. So that's something to to make sure you check first, because otherwise you're going to compensate with that with your lower back and you're going to flare up with your ribs. A lot of these things um, are going to show up in terms of compensation. So to be, to do the wall test first, to make sure you're bracing properly um, and, and getting that connectivity first uh, would be everything. I want to, I want to address your, your question about, you know, how do you progress your weight, but without tearing your shoulder off and so that, because I just recently actually brought this up. I don't know uh, how long ago it was, but remember when we were having this conversation about uh, mace spells, and I said, you know, the one thing I, because I, I, I absolutely love them, Ju Justin introduced them to me. It's been an absolute game changer uh, for my shoulder mobility. It's my one of my favorite ways to prime when I do any sort of upper body uh, upper body exercises. But I actually don't really progress that weight. I've gone, I, I've worked my way up a little bit, but the reason why I don't is because I, I feel like I get the main benefits from swinging even the 10 or 15 pounder. Like if your goal is to bulletproof your shoulders, which it sounds like yours is, it's not like you're trying to be the best mace bell swinger or you're trying to, it really doesn't matter how, as long as you have some sort of resistance, 10 to 15 pounds uh, will do the job. It'll, it'll, it'll wake up all them stabilizer muscles. It'll keep the shoulders nice and uh, uh, mobile uh, and primed before you go into your workouts. So I don't really worry too much about going up. And I think that it's become popular. And when we find Mace Bell guys online, it's very trendy to see them swing in. And it's cool. Like, it's impressive for me to see Justin swing way more weight than I can. And I think that there's nothing wrong with having that as a goal. But if your main goal is you're doing it to keep healthy shoulders, then believe it or not, the 10-pound the Mace is, is, is good, in my opinion. And yeah. I mean, and I think order operation, too. I would even suggest doing – the uh, Indian clubs first, just because we can end up, we can have one at a time yeah. and, and really build and develop that skill of, of rotation in, in all areas too. So uh, the heart swings really good at that. So you, you get control in those rotations all the way from your, your wrist elbows to shoulders. Um, and, you know, building upon that, I think is, is, is an easier way to learn uh, how to, how to organize yeah. that. Tra Tra oh, go ahead. Uh, Travis, do you, do you played sport? Do you play any sports or did you play any sports when you were uh, younger in high school? I did. Yeah. Um, football through the discus and I did powerlifting. Okay, good. Okay. So, I'm, so uh, the reason why I asked you that is I'm going to try and, and kind of convey something to you. Cause you, you said something sports analogy coming in your in, huh? question <laughs> and uh, yep, it's coming. You said something in your question that is, is pretty illuminating. Now, bodybuilding has brought a lot of good things to strength training, but it's also um, brought some bad things to, to strength training. And one of the bad things that it brought to strength training is it got people to think that every time they do an exercise with any resistance whatsoever, they have to think about the muscles they're working. Now, for bodybuilding, this is perfect, right? I want to isolate a muscle. Or I want to feel a connection to a particular area. But when you're doing a, a, a skill or a movement like swinging a mace bell, it's like when you threw the discus. Imagine if you were coaching someone with the discus and they said, okay, what muscles should I be focusing on? And you're like, no, 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 no. Don't focus on muscles. Practice the movement. Because if I sit there and think shoulder, core, bicep, it's going gonna, it's gonna to segment the movement and it's not going to become very fluid. The same is true with the mace bell. You don't want to think about what muscles necessarily that you need to activate or feel it in. Think about perfecting the skill and the movement. It's much more of a skill than it is a muscle-specific exercise. Otherwise, because if you watch bodybuilders do something like a kettlebell swing, because they know they segment everything all the time when they lift, it doesn't look like a kettlebell swing. It looks like an upright row reverse curl squat, if you ever watch them do it. It's like they're trying to figure out what muscles to activate and where do I feel it. You can't do that when you do a movement like uh, mace bell. It's not about shoulders, biceps, core... Yeah, those are all active while you're doing the movement, but don't think of it that way. Think of it as a fluid skill. Yeah, That's these the are, idea. These are hilarious to me because they're they're so hard to articulate 
um, right. what's happening because it's it's a very specific type of a movement that you have to practice continuously to get um, sharper at it to to have more fluidity uh, in the movement and also like to be able to stabilize your entire body. The whole goal of it really is anti rotation everywhere else except for the shoulders, right? And so uh, to be able to create that, it takes a lot of practice and, and ability to loosen. Um, you, you know, your shoulders when you need them to be loose and then, and then brace and, and control, um, the momentum of the mace bell. Yeah, so the, the, the muscles you use are, and you feel afterwards is the side effect. Don't think of it as the primary effect. You don't want to think about what muscles do I need to activate and use when I'm doing this movement, just perfect the movement. Think of it as a sport. Think of it as throwing a discus or playing any other sport, throwing a baseball, perfect the technique. And then if you feel something sore afterwards, well, that's just the byproduct of the fact that your body needs to get used to doing this that's, particular That's movement. a good cue, what Justin just said, though. I want to go back to that because <clears throat> I'm actually, as, we, as you were asking this question, I actually have, uh, I was out of personal training when I got introduced to baseball, so I actually haven't even had the opportunity to practice articulating this to someone. So it's interesting going through this question and, and, and hearing everybody kind of describe it to you over a podcast. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> but it's a very but, visual thing. So but, it's but, tough. Yeah, but Justin just said something that I think this is what I would do with you. It's like I would actually, um, I would start with the halo with the, like a, you know, a 25 pound plate or something. And the way, what I would cue is, all right, our goal is for you to keep your entire body still except for your shoulders. Can I can I keep you from arching your back or leaning to the side? Can I keep you completely rigid while allowing your shoulders mm -hmm. to move that weight all the way around your head and then get you to understand that now this is the goal when we're swinging this big old mace is can we keep everything else stable while allowing the shoulders to rotate the the bar around your head and thinking like that. Like that's the, yeah. the goal is to get to that place. We're tipping the weight like a pendulum and then our, our elbows are really a, a point of focus in the yeah. whole thing. So it's, you know, there's a lot to it in terms of the skill and like that video, this actually motivates me to want to do a video, uh, describing it, uh, after I've, I'm showing you the actual movement, because it'll be a lot easier for me to, to kind of convey, uh, some of those, those subtleties that, that you need to consider for now. Let's, uh, Travis, are you on Facebook? Do you have a Facebook? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm going to throw you in the forum. If you're not, are you not in the forum? Are you? Not in the forum, no. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm going to throw you in the forum for free, and uh, what I want you to do is actually uh, shoot a video for us uh, of you swinging it, and then Justin could probably give yep. you some cues and tips uh, by watching you do it, it's which a lot, would probably a lot be easier for me to yeah, to be easier to to describe what he sees potentially wrong with the swing or subtle adjustments versus us trying to, you know, articulate the entire uh, movement without seeing you. That'll that'll help both of us. Awesome, awesome. And I uh, did have one more question too. Um, for my trigger sessions, would a ten pound mace bell would that be an appropriate level of intensity for uh, trigger session work? It's it's not the same thing as a trigger session, but you could replace it, so it's totally fine. Okay. Yeah, trigger sessions are more mu muscle focused, more bodybuilding, whereas the mace bell is again more movement. You're working some muscles too, but yeah, you could you could switch them. Mm -hmm. it, it, and and if you really want to get good at the mace bell, I would suggest. Yeah, it's not, it's not a bad yeah. idea. I mean, it's it's pretty close to our mobility days, so I would probably throw it in there. For yeah, sure. if you want to get better at it, that would be a good idea. Instead of doing trigger sessions, to do the mace bell. Gotcha. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys, man. It's been an honor. Thank you for uh, what all four y'all do for the industry. You thank got you, it, man. Thank Thanks you, for Travis. calling in. Cool. Do you guys remember having? I'm really, I'm really proud of you, dude. Why? You, you've been hitting it pretty well on this the sports. Analogies. I understand enough about sports to <laughs> I, convey what I know, need to convey. You know, I bet if somebody who was a first time listener, yeah, they would have just no, enough. They would have no yeah. idea, dude. Yeah, yeah I, look, I don't know names of athletes. I don't even know the rules of most sports or all the rules. You know, like, like but I understand Lombardi the mentality. Quotes, like, yeah. just throw them out <laughs> I know there, movement. Yeah. Like whoa, what? and I also hear enough to yeah. be able to bullshit if I yeah, need yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of you, dude. No, you know what? Uh, you know what though? It's funny. Do you, do you guys remember the first time watching a bodybuilder no, do a kettlebell swing? No, that's a great. Oh, you, you gave a great. That's why I'm, I'm being serious. I know I'm razzing you a little bit, but I'm actually being serious. I think that was a great analogy because you do not. You would never tell an athlete. You would never break a baseball swing, a bat, baseball bat swing. Yeah, you activate never, your obliques, yeah, use your biceps. Shot, yeah, so you yeah. wouldn't say, okay, you know, you, all the break down all the muscles. It's a, that it's would a fuck up someone's yeah. uh, someone's movement. It would mess up the skill of the whole thing. You know, this is why Olympic lifting right. is so skill oriented. Olympic lifting is so different than bodybuilding. Um, it's so different because 
you know, you, you don't care about what muscles you're using. You care about the movement, perfecting the movement. Yeah, and to that point, like in terms of strength coaches, like if we're looking at a uh, movement like that, we're watching the movement in real time and yeah. cueing yes. as they're performing. So it's the same on this level. Like I really would, to your point of like bring them in the form, I think that's the way to go uh, because I need to see it to be able to cue like one little subtlety that they could – uh, focus on in order to shape that movement in a better direction. Well, especially, since, and you brought up, you know, that you would have him do zone one first because he may not even be able to swing it properly because right. he's not primed enough to be able to pull his shoulders in external rotation. Yeah. Like right. if he can't get into that position, well, we could try all we want to swing that thing pretty. It's not going to be if it's we don't address be ugly it. otherwise. Right. Our next caller is Fatima from the UK. Fatima, how can we help you? Hi. Hi, guys. Uh, it's great to meet you and thanks for having me on. Um, I've been listening to the podcast for about six months and I've already learned so much about strength training. So thank you so much for your content. Thank you. Um, my question today is about how to get stronger. So I'm 29. I've been doing some form of strength training for the last two years, um, but I feel like my progress is very slow. My overall goal is to get stronger, but I don't have any aesthetic goals. Um, don't hate me, but I've been doing a strength program by Brett Contreras. Uh, and the only reason for this is because I found him before I found you guys. Um, and I've also been using Prime Pro to prevent injury. Um, at the moment, my squat one rep max is only 143 pounds. My deadlift is about 175. My numbers are still going up, but very slowly. Um, as a job, I'm an orthopedic surgery resident, so getting to the gym is difficult sometimes when I'm on call or when I'm on nights, and my job can be physically demanding. Sometimes I have to wear a lead apron for 12 hours a day, um, but overall, I've averaged two workouts a week for the last five months. Um, I worry that it's my nutrition, which is affecting my strength gains because I don't eat a lot when I get stressed. Um, I eat even less. I weigh about 110 pounds, um, approximately 15% body fat, according to a scale at the gym. Uh, I managed to gain about three kilos, but um, I had a bad week a couple of weeks ago and I'm pretty sure I lost it all again. Um, when I'm dialed in, I aim for 2000 calories a day, 110 grams of protein, but during stressful periods, I don't think I achieve that. Um, I try and have at least one whey protein shake a day and a protein bar to boost my protein intake and I take creatine. So my questions are, how can I get a 225 pound deadlift? And if I'm in a really busy slash stressful period, is it better for me to just eat whatever processed high protein convenience food is available or just kind of not eat? Oh, these are good questions. Great right. question. First of all, we need to break down because I've trained um, surgeons and I've trained residents. Okay. So I don't think people realize just how crazy your schedule is. So I need you to paint the picture for us and let us know what a typical day and week looks like so that we can answer your question uh, properly. Um, so my schedule at the moment is different than it usually is, but normally it's kind of like at least two to three 12 hour shift days. Um, and then I'll do night shifts, kind of four night shifts, maybe once a month kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, on average, maybe 50, 60 hours a week, something like that. Okay. And then, and then there's more to this, right? Fatima. So on your days off, do you study? Do you have to do more work for the residency or are you totally mm -hmm. off and you don't have to do anything else? Uh, as in, well, that's when I catch up on at least like my life admin and, um, you know, just, just kind of living stuff. So, um, yeah, so I, I do have to do work on my days off, yeah. yeah. But it's usually on my days off that I go to the gym. So okay. before Sal gives you the answer to, or helps you with some of the things, I just want to point out that you're actually kicking ass. Uh, I mean, considering <laughs> where you keep your your body fat percentage, considering you're, you're pretty damn strong and you're still getting stronger just slowly and that you know you don't have perfect nutrition, you have days where you're missing – protein, uh, I would say, and you have a high stress type of job, long hours. I'd say you're doing pretty damn good considering what we're working Agreed. with, just so you know. Agreed. Because what we also throwing in there is your sleep disturbances are probably all over the place. You know, if you're on call the or thing you're- is, 
I, I think I sleep really well because when I get stressed, I sleep more. Like I put everything on pause and I just like, as in it's my way of kind of mm. avoiding stress is I just go to sleep. So I, I definitely get <laughs> on average eight, yeah. eight hours a day. So that, that's, that's one thing that I, I do have dialed in. Right. But there's a difference between um, sleeping and sleeping. Um, Cause you're exhausted. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, so especially if your circadian rhythm's off, if you're doing a night shift and so you end up having to sleep during the day type of thing. So here's why I'm saying all this. First off, uh, uh, you're obviously a badass. You're obviously a high achieving individual and you are kicking ass, but what you don't want to do is ca get caught up in the, I want everything right now mm -hmm. mentality, because what'll happen is something's going to give. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is it possible to get your deadlift up another 50 pounds and to do all the things? Yeah, potentially. But the, the way that it's going to happen is by managing your workload, managing your stress and doing it very slowly. So your intensity of your workouts needs to mean, and you need to maintain something very moderate. Oh, and by the way, just a comment on Brett Contreras. Uh, he has good workouts. His his exercise programming is very sound, very solid. He's trained people for very, a long time. Very similar to ours. Very yeah. similar to ours, you know, be, uh, because he, he knows- be doing a lot worse. He knows what he's doing. So I like his workout programming. I'll send you one of our programs anyway, just so you have uh, something else if you want to try something else. But you'll probably find that it's- relatively similar to what you're going to see with just uh, a little better. Yeah. Just, it's just better. Basically <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just joking. No, I really like that. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. So, okay. So your, your, your question with the, with the deadlift, you, you keep it slow, keep the intensity moderate and really, really, really uh, play it safe when it comes to managing the stress on your body and the workload on your body. So what does that mean? That means because two things, number one, your baseline is probably more tired and stressed than the average person. And when you do it for, for a long time, when your baseline is like that for a long time, your perception of what is a lot of stress and a little bit of stress starts to become skewed. So then you may have that day or two where you feel closer to normal, but to you, you're going to be like, oh my God, I got all this energy. I'm going to go hit the gym hella hard. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is consider you're probably, until you get out of this, until you get into your career and you get a more regular schedule, you're probably, you probably want to approach your workouts with like on a scale of one to 10, probably a six or seven intensity all the time. Never go above that. Okay. So mm -hmm. six or seven, moderate. And that, you'll see strength gains with that. You'll actually mm -hmm. see strength gains with that. If you go too high, then you're going to stall. And then if you go High, are you higher than that, then you'll see yourself maybe get injured or, you know, have some other problems. Now, as far as nutrition is concerned, um, I like the shakes and I would say have those available with you at all times. And uh, if you can add things to those shakes to give them a little bit more calories, because whey is just protein. And if mm -hmm. you mix it, do you mix it with anything or do you mix it with just water? Uh, I mix it with milk. Whole milk? Uh, no, uh, semi-skimmed. I would go whole milk. So there you go. You got some extra calories right there with the whole milk. And mm -hmm. then if you could have something very, uh, an easy source of fat that you can even add to that, like peanut butter. So you can literally mm -hmm. do teaspoon of peanut butter, have a shake. And you actually have a decent, like when it comes from macros and calories, you have a decent little easy meal right there. That's going to be better than the heavily processed foods. Not necessarily from a macro perspective, because you could find processed foods that might come close to the macros. The problem is those heavily processed foods tend to trigger some behavioral effects. They tend to cause things with blood sugar and they tend to make people feel in a particular way that either makes them uh, want to overeat or undereat. And it sounds like in your case, you go towards the undereating. So yeah. I would go whole milk, have a, a nice source of fat that's real convenient, throw the protein and shake in there or the whey in there. And then there you go. That being said, I want to address the question around, uh, should I do processed foods? Because maybe you're potentially missing macros in, in that context, I would say, yes. Um, I always were, you're going to hear us, you know, preach whole natural foods, whole, and we're going to say that all the time. But if I have a client who is consistently potentially missing their protein intake, I'd rather see you get processed food with, with protein to get your, to hit your macros, uh, just the hierarchy of that, right? Obviously, whole foods, organic, all those things are nice, but at, not if you're missing your macros, especially consistently, and especially since we're trying to build strength. If you're trying to build strength and we're trying to get build muscle, uh, and you you miss protein intake on a on a semi regular basis, that that could actually be one of the reasons too why you you get stuck with your weight yeah. and plateauing. But, so I I would. But I mean, consider whey protein is processed, so that is a processed 
food. It's just a better option, especially when you mix it with whole milk and then you maybe add something else to it. Otherwise, the options tend to look like bakery items or a burger or something along those lines, something frozen that you throw in the microwave, which typically yeah. typically isn't as good. So that's why I say I would have the whole milk um, and, the, and the whey. And then, like I said, like an easy source of fat just to throw on top of it. I like peanut butter. Most of us can eat a teaspoon of peanut butter and feel great. And then just do that. And that should keep things pretty good because you're looking at, I mean, that's like a cup and a half of whole milk with whey and peanut butter. I was like, you know, you can do like five, 600 calories right there. Yeah. I've, I've been using that as kind of like a breakfast option. Like if I have a day in theater, um, then I'll have that to sustain me until lunchtime kind of thing. So, Excellent. um, yeah, I think adding the peanut butter will give it that extra boost that, Excellent. um, will be very helpful. Excellent. And Fatima, I'm going to send you, um, maps anabolic. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll be a good program for you to look at. There's a two day a week option in there, which probably sounds like it'll work with your with your schedule. No, that would be that would be absolutely great. You got it. Yeah, thanks for calling in. Keep kicking ass, by the way. No, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. She's she's doing really well. Yeah, really good. Yeah. You know this. You know what this is like. Okay, so you you earlier you were talking about like the the I guess the gear that athletes go into which is yeah. hmm. you know not what's ideal but what can i tolerate yeah yeah when you're talking with somebody who's like a resident and you know high achiever it's the same thing yeah, yeah. oh yeah it's like more and more and more push 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 and they get so used to being fried that they don't even realize <laughs> that they're yeah. fried yeah, they're so i've i've trained people in this situation and i'm just like okay what well, can i when can i add cycling when can i add this i'm like no no, no you need to add nothing yeah. You, your body is like, it's, it's fried right now. So let's just back way off. And then boom, lo and behold, shrinking. Well, if I have a client who is, you know, doing everything that she's doing right now and we're seeing any sort of strength gain and she's maintaining her body fat percent, I'm like, stay there. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. are winning. Yeah. We are. Cause you, you gotta remember that you're, you're kicking ass in other aspects of life right yeah, now. Yeah. So the, the fact that we're progressing, uh, in spite of everything else that you got exactly. going on is is a, a huge win. I, I know we always want our cake and eat it too, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like you want to get, you want to be the strongest person in the gym and then you also want to go <laughs> work 12 hours a day. It's just, uh, it's, it's something's got to give. And right now, if if you, it, it something hasn't gave, or you're not losing in one of those areas. I, yeah. I, this is just reminding this person that you're, you're doing a great job. Because yeah, this is, she said 50 to 60 hours. This isn't 50 to 60 hours of normal work. This is stress. This yeah. is high stress work. Yeah. High demanding. High yeah. demand and stress. Yeah. Definitely. Our next Caller is Eddie from California. Eddie, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Good. <laughs> hey, just uh, wanted to start off today saying thank you. You know, everyone thanks you guys for everything you guys do. You guys give great advice. Um, don't want to dwell on that too long. I know you guys hear it all the time. Uh, so to start off, um, I was running anabolic earlier this year um, and then made it halfway through performance. And I was in pretty much the best shape I'd been in since uh, high school. All right, so I'm 28 now. Um, best shape I'd been in since high school, playing all these sports. Um, I was playing beach volleyball one day, pulled my hammy. Um, didn't feel great, so I was out for a few weeks, several weeks. Uh, got a little out of shape, lost it, um, lost my groove. Um, uh, started going back once I felt good, once my hammy felt good, I, I went back to the gym. Um, Realized I wanted to focus on uh, more mobility stuff because I don't want the hammy issue happening again. And then uh, you guys have been talking about squat depth at the time on your podcast. So uh, I decided to start going deeper on my squat. So I had previously been doing 90, uh, about 90 degrees. Um, and then just said, okay, screw it. Let's send it all the way down as far as my legs will let me go. And I think after about four times doing that, um, my knees started bugging out and I, I never went and got it checked, but I'm pretty sure there was something wrong with the, uh, attendant right underneath the kneecap. Um, but I'm back now, started going back again and I'm a few weeks in the, back in performance. Um, so my question to you guys is what is the best way to really get the real deep squats, increase the mobility. And I also have an ankle mobility thing as well. I just, you know, I said, I think I sent it too quick, you know? Yeah, no, you did. Mm -hmm. You saw that what you're talking about was patellar tendon uh, or patellar tendon and uh, tendonitis. Um, okay. So if the knees bother you, it's, it's almost always ankles and or hips. hips. And so here's the deal with, with 
range of motion. A longer range of motion in exercises is better only if the person has complete control, complete stability, and can perform the movement properly with that longer range of motion. Otherwise, the shorter range of motion is better. So in, other, in your case, going down to 90 degrees was better for you than going deeper because you forced yourself to go deeper than your mobility and your stability and control allowed. So you have to address the issues that are causing you to have pain when you go down into a full squat. And it's probably ankles and hips. So I would focus a lot on ankle and hip mobility. And then if you do practice going deeper with your squat during that process, you don't go from 90 to a full squat. You literally go down an inch deeper. Mm. That's it. Just an inch deeper and then get good at that. And then maybe another inch deeper once you feel perfect there. It's a very slow process. Otherwise, you will run into problems. Have you squatted with your heels elevated? And did you notice yeah. that you still have the pain? Usually like a, a little, one of the little uh, something else underneath my, my heels, a little small weight. And you didn't notice any pain as you dropped down into your depth? Could you get a little lower? Yeah, I can get lower. Yeah, I can get lower with that. And there's there's no pain and I feel stable, right. um, which is why I, it, I think it took four, it took uh, four different days for that, that pain to actually develop. So I was getting deep and, and it felt comfortable. It was just, I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah. So that, that's one of those tests Dr. Brink took us to. It's, it, it clearly identifies an ankle mobility um, focus that you should have for that specifically. Obviously the hips could contribute to that as well, but to gain that kind of uh, control down in that depth, uh, it's going to take some work. So it's, it's a whole new exercise at that point once we can get into that depth um, but to, to focus really on your ankle mobility is going to move uh, you in that direction quite substantially. Yeah, I'm almost certain it's ankle mobility. And the mistake that I think a lot of people make, I made it when I was working on my squat depth, is I start to get down in this deep squat, and then immediately I want to start pressing the weight to chat. Like, oh, man, yeah, okay, I'm all the way down. Okay, let's add a quarter. Okay, let's add another you know, 50 pounds. And, then, and so I, you, you quickly start pushing the weight up when – you have to r remind yourself that this is actually really new territory for you. I mean, I was before that, like you, I was only squatting down to 90 degrees. So to think in four weeks time, I'm all of a sudden loading really, really deep squats is a little silly. I shouldn't be doing that. So, you know, I would take it really slow when you, when you are squatting either with your heels elevated or you're working on that depth. And I would actually mess with things like tempo and pause squats mm -hmm. and things like that way before you, way load. before I add load. So if you find like, you know, let's just say, you know, you can do 135 really deep and comfortable and you're like, Oh, I want to get to 185. Well, before you go to 185, you know, practice a pause squat down there or, a, you know, tempo squats where you go really, really slow on the way down or go all the way down, come up a little bit, pause and come up a little bit more than pause. So I would ma manipulate the time under tension and tempo and, and, and holds uh, before I start to load it more. I also think you'll get tremendous value from the guy, uh, knees over to toes guy. He has a lot of really good uh, exercises that he's doing that I think will help prime you to get you into a, a deeper, more comfortable squat. Um, and, and you just got to take it slow. It, it took me a long time to go from a 90 degree squatter all the way to ass to grass and, and comfortably do it without feeling these things. Cause I would do the same thing. I'd feel good. Oh, I'm down there. Start pressing the weight a little bit. Oh, then my knees or my yeah. hips would start talking to me. And it's just like all I, what I was doing was I was, I was loading the bar too fast. Yeah. Speaking of the knees over toes, do you have access to a sled? Cause sled drags would be amazing for you to build up strength and volume with your knee in that uh, position uh, over your toes. So uh, that's, I, I definitely suggest that. Unfortunately. I don't, but I, you know, it's not, I've always liked, I used to do sleds a long time ago. Um, and I, I loved them. I just don't do them anymore, you know, but you know, I might change some, change that to help me out a little bit. Yeah. That, that'll be good. I like that. That's do, do you, do you follow the knees over toes guy? Do you know who I'm talking about? No, no, but oh. is he on? Oh, yeah. Where's he at? He's huge on, I mean, you'll find him on Instagram, yeah. YouTube. He's all over. He's been making the rounds for the last couple of years. He's got great content mm -hmm. specific to what we're talking about right now. So like literally, yeah, just go down the rabbit hole. He's got the sled drags that Justin's talking about and some great lunges where you, you really drive the knee over the toe and just good stuff to get you really primed to get comfortable in that deep position. I think adding some of that into your routine right, you, and, and taking it slow, 
you'll be fine. Eddie, do you have uh, Maps Prime Pro? I do not, no. Right. I'm going to send that to you because you, there's lots of ankle and hip mobility movements in there. So practice those. Oh, oh yeah. Practice those regularly. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. So I know um, you had said go down inch by inch. Are you saying take it light, like real lightweight, go down inch by inch? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You want to go, okay. you, you want to go, when we say take it slow, we mean that with everything weight, with depth, and I mean absurdly slow, slower than you think. Yeah. Okay. Because here's what happens you don't feel the pain from having a little bit of instability issues, you usually don't feel the pain in the workout. You usually feel it after, and sometimes it takes two or three workouts. If, if it's an ankle mobility issue, though, which I think we all agree it probably is, then you could actually deep squat all the way down, but then just elevate your heels even more. So get, get yourself in a nice elevated position, and then you should feel pretty comfortable going on the down, all the way down. What if you're going to stay with flat shoes or barefoot, and then then what Sal's saying, hundred percent, you need to go inch by inch, take your time, progressing it slowly. But by you elevate, you're basically artificially giving yourself more more knee travel by elevating the heels. So if it is an ankle mobility issue, one of the things you can do to get get to practice deep squatting, even though you don't have the ankle mobility, just don't neglect. Like that the problem that when I give that advice, someone's like, "Oh, cool!" So then they elevate, they elevate their heels, they squat yeah. comfortably, it doesn't bother them, and then they never address the root cause of the issue, which is the ankle mobility. So you can do both in conjunction, right? Yeah, and think too of increasing muscle tension. So just like you can flex right now your your arms, like in like without any kind of load, uh, you're going to do that to your body as you drop down into that squat. The more that you're getting your muscles to engage, the more it's sending that signal that it's supported. Uh, and, and stabilized. So that's really what we need to get that signal to the body. So that way, when you're in that kind of depth, you have that strength and control to dig your way out. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Thanks cool. for calling in, Eddie. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. That's easily the biggest mistake people make whenever uh, trying to do a, a greater range of motion with exercises. They either stay with the same weight or they get a grain to range of motion, like wow, that feels good. Now let me load it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, you know, it's hard to communicate just how slow you need to take it. You know, you got to really take your time because oftentimes it's not in the workout. It's often not like, oh, that hurt yeah. while you're doing it. It's like the day or two later, and you're like, what did I do? Your body's been so good at at uh, preventing you from going further in that angle. And so it's like, if you think about how often you've practiced being right. in that angle, it's like yeah. never. And so to add a bunch of load on that, you really have to treat it like it's a totally different exercise. Yeah, to give you, to give an I, you know, I'll tell a story. I had a client once. She was an executive and wore heels all the time. All the time wore heels, heels, heels. And we were talking about you know, ankle and foot strength and whatever. And she's like, you know what I'm gonna do when I'm home, I'm just gonna go barefoot all the time. Well, she very quickly de developed too much, too plantar soon. fasciitis. Mm -hmm. And why? Because she was so used to walking in heels that she goes went from heels to flat foot all the time that it caused problems. So it's like, she had to go like five minutes at a time to get her body used to that. So that's kind of what happens when you're, when you've been working out a particular way and you challenge yourself with a new range of motion you know, you got to treat yourself like a complete beginner. That's yeah. exactly what you got to do. I did the same thing. I mean, I I went through the same process. Uh, you get excited because you're yeah. going deeper. Of course, and it feels good in the yeah. moment. Yeah, and it feels good. And do. so then you you instantly want to start adding the weight and get back to the weight that you can, you know, traditionally squat. And yep. so, yeah, no, I made I made this mistake multiple times and you just got to regress it. And and the, to Justin's point, get, get to the bottom, create tension on the bottom. I believe, so if he's listening to this afterwards, Eddie, I believe if we go uh, back on my Instagram a little bit, you'll see some of the squat priming I do where I'm creating tension, like Justin's talking about with just my body weight, yep. uh, where I'm trying to prime my ankles. I, I'm, I'm like basically hugging a, um, a squat rack and, and driving my knee over my toes, intensifying it, then going to the other side and, you know, pushing the knees out and engaging my glutes. Like, so uh, yeah, prime, prime like that. And then even when you get into loading it, you know, load it with a little bit of weight and then do that same stuff at the bottom of your squat to create that tension Justin's talking about, and then take your time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Being hyper-focused on your fitness goals is killing your gains. It would have been more controversial just to say your goals are killing just your, your goals. Just your goals are yeah, killing yeah. your gains. Yeah. 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 That, I, I got to be a little bit more A little more clickbaity. 
Yeah. Because that would have got more attention. Like, you think so? Yeah, so just well, what you said more seems accurate, obvious. So okay. I, I, I go Less controversial. We'll do this again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Cancel. No, we're not. Let's no, keep no. going. I like where you're going, though. I mean, I, I, think, uh, I think... No, I'll do it. All right, we go. Yeah. No, seriously? It's only happened three times in our life. Okay, well, let's... Oh, just, yeah, shit. I was joking. This, let's keep... That's fine. Right. Let's make it concise. Having goals is killing your gains. Ooh. Oh, is that a better one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanna, tried this 50 times. I want to talk about this because um, how often, how many times we had clients or now we have callers call in where they talk about- Can I have, stop you? This goal or that goal? No, you, you referenced something that the audience has zero clue about. It's like, is this a better one? <laughs> what are you talking about? Because <laughs> we didn't play. All right, the first take game. three. It doesn't. That part doesn't matter, Doug. <laughs> the first one didn't matter. We Jesus could, Christ, we work through it. You guys fucking. You're not allowed to stop the show. Dude. Everybody's hungry. Jesus Christ. All right, I'll do it again. Let's go. That's fine. Yeah, it's like it, you have to when you reference <laughs> you when you to. when you, you reference pay you to agree with Doug. <laughs> when you reference something that people have That's zero fine, clue about. That's fine. No we'll relevance. Right, let's like, go. Let's go. That's fine. <laughs> Take three. Here we go. Doug is killing three. your gains. <laughs> there you go. Here we go. <laughs> your goals are killing your gains. Is that better? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> that landed. <laughs> you still did it to him. I know. I did, I did that on purpose. I did that one on purpose. Oh, right. it's Monday. Piss off, Doug. Yes, yes, yes sir. Off. Hands are rolling. Wait, hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. Listen. All right. Listen, All right. listen, All right. listen Sal, can you do this? Whoa. <laughs> oh, shit. Whoa. <laughs> Too far. Wow. Calm down, Carl. Are we recording, Doug? Relax. Just make sure you're recording. If you stop me because we're not recording, I'll be really upset. <laughs> Doug, Doug just went me. postal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Here no, we go. No, no, no. Are you doing it over again? No, I am. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, no, he was fucking Well, I feel those. like you had, I like, I like all no, that. No, I did that with Doug. Yeah. I did that for Doug. Sorry. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free guides and free information that we offer all of our viewers and listeners. Again, it's free, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out, and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.